We are reading at Psalm 25 today, so let's hear God's word. It's a psalm of David. In you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without a cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for, you, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope, Lord, is in you. Deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. We have a phrase, don't we, uh, four seasons in one day. It's the sort of day when you're not quite sure what to put on when you're about to go out. It could be anything. It could be baking sun. It could be hailstones. It could be pouring rain. It just could be damp and misly. And uh, sometimes, I don't know about you, but as I'm reading the Psalms, it feels a little bit like that. Um, and this Psalm has uh, great moments of declarations of um trust in God and confidence in what God is doing and yet then part way through there's, there's quite a shock as um, the uh, psalmist's own experience is um, expressed and, and what he's currently going in so let's, let's just follow through and see uh, in verse one here's the declaration at the start in you Lord my God I put my trust it is a great declaration of faith and determination I'm trusting you God I know who you are I know you're there and I am trusting in you. There's the starting point. Sounds rock solid, doesn't it? And uh, and then he says again, I trust in you. Uh, that's quickly followed by, do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. You see, you need to trust when you're in trouble. You don't need to trust when things are going fine. And so for the psalmist, right from the beginning then, there's clearly a fear of shame. There's clearly a fear of enemies triumphing. But it's com combined with this confidence, isn't it? Verse 3, no one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. So, so the psalmist is pleading um, uh, as he places his trust that God will keep him from his enemies and from shame. But he's confident that those who trust in the Lord will not be allowed uh, to be subjected to shame. And then there's this wonderful prayer, isn't it? Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. So there you are. It's not just trust, it's hope. And that's making him long that God would lead him and teach him and, and guide him. And then there's a plea, isn't there? Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you, Lord, are good. So here's this psalmist who's trusting God, who's hoping in God but actually has a, a past that is full of uh, sin, um, full of rebellion. And he's asking God uh, to remember him in love, covenant love, gracious love, merciful love, because God is good. And then he builds on that, doesn't he? Eight, verse 8, good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right. He teaches them his way. 
so, so here's here's the character of God, and because he's like this, he helps his people uh, to uh, live in, in, in the right way, teaches them what they should be doing. Verse 10, all the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful to lo- toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. This is interesting, isn't it? But the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who meet the demands of his covenant. The trouble is, the Old Testament Israel never did. But here is someone who's wanting to, and in his failure, recognizes the need for forgiveness, and so pleads for forgiveness. And the Old Covenant allowed that with the, the, the sacrificial system and coming again and confessing sin over the head of an animal. And then as it's slain, it's, it's bearing the penalty for your sin. And you can be restored in that outward ritual sense, but also as a picture of what's going on in the heart, trusting in what God is going to ultimately provide uh, in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so uh, here is this recognition that, uh, that God is loving and faithful to those who meet his covenant demands. And so is saying, I'm not one of them because of my sin, forgive me. And then he raises the question, who then are those who fear the Lord? Well, he'll instruct them in the ways they should choose. Uh, they're going to spend their days in prosperity. Their descendants will inherit the land. And then there's this fascinating phrase, verse 14, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord confides. The Lord opens his heart. The Lord uh, bears his soul. The, the Lord communicates and shares with those who fear him. Uh, the Lord reveals himself to those who are uh, turn towards him. So the psalmist says, my eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. I, I, I am looking to God uh, and, and therefore expecting that God is going to reveal himself to me. But, but now the lid's lifted. So there's acknowledgement of sin in the past. There's acknowledgement of, of the danger of enemies, but he's conf- uh, um, confessing faith and trust and hope, uh, acknowledging sin, but turning to God and it all sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And then all of a sudden, verse 16, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Wow. For all the confidence, for all the statements of faith and trust, here is a here is a bruised reed. Here is someone who's struggling. Here's someone who's isolated. Here's someone who's troubled. And he's pleading, verse 17, relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look at my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. It's piling up now, isn't it? Actually, there's there's the guilt within of his own failings, but then there's the opposition without, all leading to distress. So he pleads with the Lord, verse 20, that he would guard his life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in me. My, my integrity and upright, protect, uprightness protect me because my hope, Lord, is in you. Can you see again? He's, he's needing rescue. He's, he's needing uh, protection, not to be put to shame. He's taking refuge in God. Here's his declaration. And I am coming to you, God. I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm placing myself in, in you as my security. And here's an interesting phrase, verse 121. May integrity and uprightness protect me. Well, he's just been confessing his sin all the way through. So whose integrity? Whose uprightness? Well, he's endeavouring to live like that, but I think this points us to the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? It's his integrity, his uprightness, which is our hope, which is the righteousness that's made over to us. Uh, and, and the psalmist points us in that direction, doesn't he, verse 21, because he says, because my hope, Lord, is in you. He doesn't say may integrity and uh, uprightness protect me, <laughs> because look how good I am, but because my hope, is in, Lord, is in you. And then a final prayer, deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. And this is just so helpful, isn't it? Because as Christians, we, we live like this, the four seasons in one day. We, we have uh, our confidence in the truths that we believe. We, we, we pray, Lord, trusting you, I'm looking to you, I believe these things. And yet uh, there are struggles then. Uh, we meet situations during the day which, which rock us or rattle us. And uh, Lord, help me in this. Don't, don't let me be overcome by this. And, and, and then we go through our moments of, of great shame because of of the wrong that we've done and we turn to the Lord with confidence in his covenant and and his provision and in all of this that seems so robust and and, and yes it's it's real there's suddenly this but, but I'm, I'm I'm isolated I'm I'm on my own I'm lonely I'm afflicted there there's moments of just feeling utterly bereft and desperate and then it finishes with a prayer for all of Israel that God would deliver them from all their troubles, a the consciousness that it's not just me, but, but the whole nation, and there's a connection with others as well, and all these jumbled and uh, linked thoughts, and, and isn't that 
the reality of our faith day by day. Kind of four seasons in one day. Uh, and here's just helpful expression to that and a helpful insight to, to someone else who's walked that path. And uh, uh, helpful patterns for us, things to pray for. That the Lord would guide, that the Lord would rescue, uh, that the Lord would uh, look on us, that the Lord would confide in us, that he'd reveal himself to us. Consciousness of uh, what we do with our sin and our shame. Yes, we, we have fallen short, but Lord, remember in, in mercy that we come placing our confidence in what Christ has, has done. Uh, and then as we recognise the fragility of our own hearts, praying for others uh, to hear a helpful words for us to, to learn and uh, model our prayers on and to express our own experience of a, a typical day following uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for these psalms. We thank you that, that, uh, that they're such varied uh, pieces of literature, such uh, different expressions. Uh, and we thank you for the, the tumbling of thoughts in this psalm and the, uh, the varied experience of the psalmist, all, all in just a few moments, it would seem, and all related. And it, it just feels so real, so true. And uh, Father, we, we do trust in you. We are taking refuge in you. Our hope is in you. But at the same time, we are lonely and afflicted and we are ashamed of our sins and we are fearful of our enemies. And we do want you to deliver your people. And Father, we thank you then that you, you've given us words to express that. You've given us a model. You've given us encouragement that this is what it's like. We thank you that we can trust in the, the sacrifice of your son. We thank you that we can um, trust in his integrity and uprightness, that he has provided the righteousness that we need. And we are secure then in our covenant relationship with you, not on the basis of what we have done but on what Jesus has done. And we, we can truly hope and trust and confess and be honest and experience the, the day and times and the difficulties knowing that you are faithful and you understand and you love us and you call us on. And we praise you in this, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>